So we are continuing our vector logo project. In order to do that, I have my sketch ready, which started as a line art sketch, but I chose which shapes I wanted to fill in because vector imaging at its most basic is like cutting out black paper. So this is basically the black paper shape I want to cut out. And we do that digitally through a vector graphics program. We can use Adobe Illustrator, that's kind of the professional standard, but a free online version that's available, browser-based, is vector.com. And you'll see it linked right in our assignment description where we post our projects. So the first thing I posted was my sketch, like that. The next thing I'll post is a, a finished black shape vector, like these. But I need to learn how to actually make it work. And before I even bring in my sketch to trace, I'm going to click on my little help button here, the info button in the upper right hand corner, and I'm going to click on lessons. So at any time you can do these to remind yourself about how the vector dot com program works. And we're going to look right first just to get started, and then we're going to look at paths, which are the main way you make your vector shapes. So if you remember um, exercise two, where we use shape tools within PhotoP to make our own emoji, to match an emoji that we created on Emoji Maker, you have shape tools here. So that's a, a really basic way of making vectors, just using shape tools. You can transform them, rotate them. You can't warp them, but you can do a lot of the things that uh, you're familiar with in PhotoP with them. So here it just introduces us, if we want to make a shape, we just click the basic shape, and then we click and drag. And if we want it to be locked, we can hold down Shift, just like in PhotoP and we can make shapes. Now, if we wanna make more complicated, customized vector paths, so vectors are called paths when they're connected, we click on what's called the pen tool. So this is the new tool we're using. And in order to make a shape, let's say I want to make a square, I'm gonna click, I can hold down Shift, It will kind of lock into horizontal and vertical, and it will give me little uh, helpful guidelines like that blue line showing me when it's lined up with my former point. But then I need to finish it by clicking where I started. I have to close the path. And then there's the freeform path tool. And so if I try to draw a square just by clicking and dragging, you're gonna see it's gonna create a lot more anchor points than just at the four corners. And it's pretty hard to finish it. I have to hover over my beginning point and then it will finish off. But we can always freeform shapes as well and then simplify them later. And then type, like we saw here, type is the most common vector shape we see every day. Every letter form is a customized vector shape. We'll be learning more about that as we do our own type design in a, a later assignment. But we can also just use the type tools. And just like we would in any word processor, we can write some text. and then double click it outside of the type box. And then we can, we can edit that type just like it's a vector. And then we can also upload images from outside, like my sketch. So we're gonna do that. In order to do that, you can drag and drop an image right onto the, the workspace. Let me try that with my JPEG. and then we can use that to trace on top of. When I drag and drop a raster image that was scanned or that was created in a 
in a raster program like PhotoP, it doesn't automatically turn it into a vector. It just gives me a pixel-based image that I can trace with my vector tools. And then there are, just like there were in PhotoP for the shape tools, there are pre-made shapes. So if we click here, you can see all of these different custom shapes. So let's pick one. Some of these can be very helpful to modify to get us where we want to go. And then to export. So let's say we've, we've drawn something we like. We've closed the path. That's the tricky part. You know, we've made it a filled path and we want to save it, we have to export it. And for that, we can choose SVG, which is a vector format. And that's what you're going to do while you're working on it. So if I download the X, XVG, SVG, which I'm actually not sure what SVG stands for, but I think it's, I always think of it as standing for standard vector graphic. Now, because I saved that, I'm just in the vector program. I said new file. There's nothing here yet. I can import using this little cloud, the upload image, and I can go to my downloads and I can actually, as long as I can find it, where did that SVG file go? <laughs> but I can upload an SVG. For instance, this one. And then it will come in as a vector file, only if you save it as an SVG vector file format. OK. That's lesson one, just intro to these basic tools. The lesson that's probably the most helpful to you is on paths. So this is how to use the pin tool to make your custom shapes. And you can watch the video if you want, but we're just going to follow the steps. So I recommend all of you do this. So we click the pin tool, and we're going to start drawing a path. As we click, it's going to set an anchor point. Notice how they're all straight for right now. And then I want to end where I began, and that will close the path. Once I have a path, even if it's open like this, all I have to do is double click it to be able to see the anchor points. And that allows me to edit it. I can move the anchor points around. And then once I've selected an end anchor point, I can add on to it. But first I have to double click to see them. I'm on a different tool. So I can do Command Z to get back. But double clicking I can add on to existing paths. So I double click to find the anchors. And then I can drag different anchor points to different places to move them into a new position. Double click in order to see the anchors. Once you can see the anchors, they're editable. Notice I'm on no particular tool right now. It just looks like kind of a move icon. But if I'm on the path, it switches to a different cursor icon, and it allows me to add new anchor points onto the, the path. Now I can also select multiple paths to move. So if I hold down Shift and I click there, you see how it turns gray, there, and there, it will make a little selection box around all of them. And then I can click and drag, and they will all move together. So it's a way of kind of, kind of warping it, you know, bulk selecting it. Then I can also edit 
and delete points. So not only can you add anchor points, you can also just select them and then delete them. So this is, these are all made of straight so far. But if I double click on a point, it will change it from being straights to a curve. And when you get a curve, you get what are called Bezier handles here. And we're going to learn more about those later, how you get to control those. And then on this one, I double click to find the anchor points. If I double click, it will turn the, the curves into straights, which takes away all the customized Bezier handle settings and just makes them straight. So if I double click, it converts it to a curve. If I hold down shift while using the handles, you will see it will let me vary the size of the handle on each side while still lining up the handles. Whereas if I don't hold down shift, they'll grow equally from both sides. But if I hold down shift, I can change the, the curve on each side, whereas the angle of the curve is the same. But if I hold down my action key, not only can I change the length of the curve independent on each side, I can also change the angle independent on each side. Professor, if if you cut out the, uh, the fill and turn on the border, yeah. will it give you an additional set of anchor points on the interior? That's a great question. No, it will not. So what a border does is it just expands the pixels around the path, around the original anchor point. So we're actually going to want to make our logos all out of filled paths. And I can show you that a little bit better in Illustrator. In Illustrator, you have a way where you can make it a border, what's called a stroke in Illustrator. And then you can select something called outline stroke, and then it will automatically make a vector path around that outline. <laughs> but the problem with using strokes or borders only is that those do scale differently because they're set to a different point size in the programming. So as you shrink or enlarge just an outline, a stroke or a border, it will shrink and grow um, according to how many points it's set to. So it will look thinner when it's bigger and it will look thicker when it's smaller. So that's why we have to outline everything as its own path that's filled in so that we can actually control how thick the lines are. It's confusing, but it's a good question. And we'll get to it. So along with the anchor points making shapes it also and along with converting the the points to straights or to to curves it also gives you the option of rounding corners which is different than converting them to to curves so rounding corners here is with this inner handle so even when you just plot straights it will give you the option at corners to round it out now, if we hold down shift while we're doing it, it will equalize it across all the corners in that shape. That's just what that tutorial is showing us. So there's lots. So let's look at what uh, Patrick was asking about. So I'm going to start a new file. And I'm just going to... Uh, also, Professor, your yeah. computer's about to die. Oh, thank you. Well, no, I've got seven. Once I get down to five, I really preserve this battery. I will plug it right in. I like to put you guys, give you a little bit of tension in the morning. But yeah, keep an eye on my battery. Once it gets to five, I'm going to start. So here we have a filled vector path. I just used a shape tool. So each time you put a vector out, you're going to have options for it. You'll see them off to the right. So you have color options. It doesn't really matter what color it is. We're going to make it solid black, which is uh, the hex code, hash code 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, right? So you can always change the color of your vector paths, just like the shape tools in Photopea. 
But then we also have the option 